Next up on WTV. Phone policies, FISD podcast, and this week's edition of My Life Fast. WTV's daily update starts now. Hey there, Hawk Nation. Today is Thursday, March 17th, and I'm Karina Koeska of today's daily update, brought to you by Wingspan TV. Throughout the school year, the Wi-Fi has been going on and off and sometimes won't come back on all day, which raises the question, what do teachers do when this happens? WTV's Charles Deardorff has the details. Society's reliance on technology definitely has some blessings, but there are also some curses to it. Here on campus, with every student and every teacher often relying on Wi-Fi, there's going to come a time when the Wi-Fi goes out. And when that happens, teachers often have a backup plan. With the uh, one-to-one devices, I've pretty much transitioned my entire lessons to um, electronic. Now some of my lessons I do have paper copies and I will be able to pivot and make some adjustments, but the majority of my things are online and so I, I rely heavily on Wi-Fi. Even in class that requires computers, teachers such as Elliot Partman have a backup plan as well. Personally for me as a teacher, I always have a backup plan and there's always going to be something for the kids to do because they can just go out and shoot for like their portfolio project. And Reporting for WTV, I am Charles Dierdorf. Students on their phone is an issue at many schools, but what can be done about it? WTV's Danielle Memoron talked to the few people and provides a take. According to a survey taken in 2019, nearly 50% of students are distracted by technology. For some students, that may be social media. For others, that may be playing video games. But either way, it is a challenge for teachers. Phones are a major issue um, throughout class. Students get very, very distracted with them. Problem is though that every teacher is different about their phone policy. Freshman Peter Peeve agrees that the lack of consistency between teachers is an issue. Phone policies are too inconsistent. Uh, some classes you can use your phone whenever and then other classes you can uh, just do as much as get your phone taken up for checking the time. It's just too inconsistent. To help combat this issue, Ms. Speller has a suggestion. We need to have a stricter entire school policy um, where students are held accountable for bringing their devices to school. And by devices, I mean their Chromebook or if they have a tablet or whatnot. Um, so that way they always have that and there's no excuse for needing their phones. Reporting for WTV, I am Daniel Memoron. From social media to email, Frisco ISD has many platforms to reach parents and students about what's happening in the district. And now they've added another new way to reach people. WTV's Michelle Monahan has the details. The number of podcasts available to listen to has skyrocketed with a 20 million increase every year. Joining this trend is Frisco ISD, which launched its podcast to help inform the community and stakeholders on a variety of topics facing the district. We believe that the on-the-go nature of podcasts can reach people where they are and give them an opportunity to connect with the district beyond other communication mediums, such as our website or social media. Covering topics from roles in the district to how fine arts affects you, the podcast is another source for information, with the Frisco ISD podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Reporting for WTV, I am Michelle Monahan. On this week's edition of My Life As, WTV takes a look into the life of skydiver Trinity Williams. A tradition that me and my family have is to go skydiving on our 18th birthdays. I went to Skydive Spaceland where I learned how to skydive for my first time. Whenever I got there, I signed in, got some legal work done, and headed to the back room to watch videos on what to do during the flight. Whenever the videos were over, I walked into the main room and met with my instructor. After that, he walked me through the steps one more time and I put on my harness and I got ready. We jumped from 14,000 feet up and the flight only took about 12 minutes to get up there. After that, I got locked in with my tandem guide and we were ready for the jump. After we jumped, we free followed for about one minute and then I got to pull the parachute. The falling was so fun. We did so many turns and we flipped so many times. After free falling for about five minutes, we got to 100 feet when we were ready to land. We landed perfectly standing up. After that, I got my skydiving log and I also bought one more jump. I think everyone should go skydiving. 
If you're looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or visit our war wing website, libertywingspan.com. And now for today's announcements. Travel can provide educational opportunities that can't be found in the classroom. And in summer of 2023, students will have the chance to travel to Japan as part of a non frisco IC affiliated EF tour. More details will be released next week. See teacher Brian Higgins and see 102 for more details. PALS is hosting an event after school called Painting with PALS, where kids get together to hang out and paint. It will be held today after school in room C138. Scan the QR code below for more information. Academic Octathlon is looking for freshmen and sophomores with all GPAs to compete in April's competition. If you are interested, please complete the form using the QR code shown and join us for an informational meeting on Tuesday, March 22nd during Advisory and Portable 3. That's it for today's daily update. This is Karina Garcia for Wingspan TV.